and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou, but know this, God said, be who you want to be. Do what you want to do. Come out here on Black Bike Week when you ain't even supposed to be out here. You ain't got no business being out here. Your ass should be in the house somewhere as an 18-year-old girl with all these old-ass, cool-ass men out here. Okay, God said live it up. Okay, do that. Keep reading. But know thou, but know this. All this is what God say, read. That for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. God gonna judge you for what you do, young man. Young man. God said, go ahead, live it up. Try to live like these old folks out here that don't give a damn. All they want to do is ride on motorcycles and look at old cellulite ass. Go ahead, be like you. God said, young man, I'm gonna judge you for what you do. I got sand in my boots and dust in my eyes, but it's okay. As long as they got fear in their eyes and hurt in their soul, then it's okay. And it's okay. Yeah. South Carolina. Blitz. What? As long as I got sand in my boots and dust in my eyes, then I'm okay. So what can I get? So why do they lie to us with this? You see what I'm saying? Because whoever controlled the slave mind controlled the slaves. So they put this in your mind, so now you don't have no self-love for yourself no more. Okay. I'm sick of this, okay. the Jews and Wiggins the They ride on their bikes, not ride on guys I'm tired of this week, okay It's not the best You're not about to do that dollar The dollar will be a whore Right to say, yo, let not to be whores Because y'all the best women on the face of the earth Matthew 24, because believe it or not, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, that actually walked the earth, the Son of God, he warned us about that right there. And this is never taught in the Christian church. Watch this. Matthew 24, I think it's 3. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privily, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Because he prophesied about the end times to come. The time we're living in right now, while everybody out here is living the good times, like Christ said, is as in the days of Noah, they shall be eating and drinking and marrying, and the Son of Man gonna come like a thief in the night. Now keep reading. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? When are you gonna be coming? It's when everybody think it's all good in the nation. Neighborhood and we out here to kick it on a Friday night and live our best life. Because you YOLO, you only live once. Keep reading. And the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Jesus said what? Take heed that no man deceive you. How did, the, how did a man deceive us in believing that Jesus looked like them? What did they do? They painted the picture to look like them. You read, you have never looked, check this out, and this is how important the deception is where you gotta know. God looks like that, right? Jesus looked like that with woolly hair. They gave us this image of a white man right here, right? Um, what type of hair do our women love? I'm gonna talk to the man right now. Sister though, she already has that to her. What type? We're like what? They're like leave, right? That don't come out of black folk head. That came from this right here. Read what Jesus said again. Take heed that no man deceive you. Because in the deception of what Jesus looked like, you're going to learn to hate yourself as a race. That's why, I look, check this out. I'll tell you this right now. You think these, um, you think a, if a white person jog through the hood, do black people touch them? Hell no. But if, if my old people is in the hood and he got some Jordans and he ain't from around here, what's the first thought black people gonna do? What's the first thought black people if he ain't from my hood? That nigga about to get got. Why? Because we've been deceived of what the image of Jesus looked like. We have learned to hate ourselves instead of loving our own people. Right. Keep reading in that. For many shall come in my name. For what? Many shall come in my name. Check this out. It says many 
shall come in my name. Now here's the, here's the thing. How who's the many that came and said Jesus looked like us? Read it again. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. What religion on the earth saying came and said Jesus looked like us? Because it didn't say one person, it said many. What religion? What religion was it? Christians. Christianity. And he asked you earlier, right? He asked you earlier. Where we going? What we doing? We can't be on the sidewalk? Oh, inside the barricades. Hey, hey um, officers. No one is here? Okay. Back up. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. I need a sign for it turned a corner. Cat a corner? Yeah. Cat a corner. Oh, All right, hey, brothers and sisters, here we go. Hold on, let me right here. We're still on this. So it said that many, read it again. Give me space, give me space. But many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And many, many said. Now watch out for that right there. It said many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ. The many people is talking about is a religion. Christianity came and said that they are the representatives of Jesus Christ and started a religion by it. Okay, he said, ahead. beware of that because that religion will deceive you and they will use Christ as a scapegoat for it. Here's the question, I'm gonna prove it to you. Uh, let's see. For God so loved the world that he what? It is only Damn! Damn. <laughs> It's amazing that y'all know that. Now watch this, watch this, sister, watch the deception. Watch this. What verse 15 say? Uh, what verse 15 say? What verse 14 say? What verse 1 say? Who is he even talking to in that chapter? Do you know? I just want to know. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what that's called? Deception. Right. Yeah. You've been deceived right. to believe out of the code. No other religion. I know from what I know, Islam does not go around saying John 3 16 for gospel of the world. Islam don't say that, right? Buddhism don't say that either, right? Hinduism, you ever heard that? The one religion that says that is Christianity, right? Now check this out. Yeah. You guys are reading out of the Bible, but you Right. Now look, but look, look how we read out of it. Read, read it again. Pay attention to these words. Read verse 3. Verse 1. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's what happened. We are reading out of the Bible. You have been deceived to believe that the Bible got anything to do with Christianity. It does not. But, but what do y'all believe in? What do y'all believe in? Huh? What do y'all believe in? What do y'all believe in? The fish chase. Huh? We believe that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. We're not out here teaching you religion. We are teaching you who you are in the Bible. That's right. And the Bible is a history book. Right. We've been deceived by that image right there to believe that the Bible is a religious book when it has nothing to do with religion. Right. I'm going to prove it to you. Watch this. Watch this. You look at me. Watch this. What day do Christians go to church on? Depends on Saturday or Sunday. What day do the majority go? Okay, I and, and look, cause I'm I'm in the same place y'all was. I grew up Baptist. Baptists, Baptists go to church on the seventh day, on the first day, the uh, first day of the week, Sunday, right? Now let's see Exodus chapter twenty, and let's see what God said to do, and let's see if that religion that claims that they have the uh, knowledge of Jesus Christ, let's see if they do what Jesus did. Read it. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Bring it out. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's what you mentioned, right? You said Saturday or Sunday. What well, Saturday is what day? It's the what? Huh? Oh, it's the seventh. It's the seventh day. It's the seventh day. Right? It's the seventh day. It's the seventh day of the week, right? Now, Christians go to church on majority. Go to church on the seventh day or the first day? The first day, right? Which would be what day? What? Sunday. Read it again. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It didn't say remember the first day of the week to keep it holy. But Christians do what? With the same Bible they we read it from, they show up to church and worship God on the seventh day or the first day. 
But how you pop with y'all? Wait, let's have a table. We're going to build. What day do the majority of Christians go to church to worship God? Is it the seventh day or the first day of the week? It could be any day you want it to be. It could be any day you want it to be. It be any day you be. Okay, it can be. You know why it can be any day? You know why it can be? Because you can make days. You got it. God did. God made days. Yeah, and he told us when to worship God. I'm not, listen, I'm not telling you when to worship God. God is. Read it again. Let's remember the seventh day to keep it holy. I didn't write the Bible. God did. No. He told God didn't write the Bible. Him. God didn't write the Bible. No, that seven. There was set, there was other uh there was scholars. There was scholars that wrote the Bible. Huh? There were scholars that wrote the Bible. God didn't write the Bible. There were scholars that wrote the Bible. Okay, all right, so you're telling me that Peter was a scholar. Yes, they were. They were fishermen. They were fishermen. Let me let me No, no, no. 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 No, most Christians go to church and worship him on the first day of the week. Let's see what Jesus did. Luke 4, verse 16. What God do y'all serve? Huh? What God do y'all serve? The God of the Bible. What God is the Bible? Yeah, God of the Bible. What, what God? Sit here and listen God? all of them and we'll answer your question. Is it Jehovah? So let's get back to this right here. Let's is see what Jehovah Jesus Allah? did. Read that. Alright, hey, what, what's that quote that people say? What's that quote that people say? What would Jesus do? What do Bible say? Let's see what it is. What do Bible say? Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth. What do the word Bible even stand for? You tell me. You tell me. You tell me. What do the word Bible even stand for? Yeah, holy books, collection of books. No. Yeah. What do, do? What, what do the B I B L E stand for? <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, let me tell you. 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 Let me tell what show me that book. Basic instruction before the book. No, no, show me where it's in the book. Wait, what? Y'all, y'all, y'all. Hey, y'all right moving the book. Y'all set me up. Basic instruction before the book. Where is it? Where is it? Show it. Where no, you want to believe it. Show us where in the Bible it says basic instruction before the book. Basic instruction before the book. He said the same thing. Yeah, there you go. Who's the book? Show us where it's saying that in the Bible. Look, hold on. Look, look, look. 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 Jesus actually you can't tell me Let's what read it. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. Listen up, y'all. Let's read. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And his custom was, he went into the synagogue for the seventh day. Okay, now, listen to this. I'm seeing y'all paying attention to God or be paying attention to a man. When did Jesus worship God? What's the God? What's the God? When did Jesus worship God? Okay. Yeah. When did Jesus Let's see if y'all paid attention. If y'all listening to God or you listening to man. Huh? He prayed. Let's see. He prayed to God. Listen. Yeah. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. What day was it that, God, that Jesus wouldn't worship God? On what day? What did he say? I wish I had a mic. On what? I wish I had a mic. What did he say? On what day? The Sabbath day. Now, I asked y'all earlier. What day do majority of Christians go to worship God? On the Sabbath day or Sunday? Go back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. Yeah, look, you make it. You connected the dots because I'm smart young girls. I know black women are definitely smart, so you understand the stuff that's coming out. What happens is you got to get man out your damn ear so you can listen to God. Right. Because most men out here ain't got nothing good for you sisters out here. All they want to do is sex you and throw you away. That's what's right. Hey, oh, now, now check this out. Check this out. Is it, do y'all believe, sisters? I'm going to ask y'all a real question. Because y'all young enough to be my daughters. Do y'all think men are out here looking for a wife this weekend? No, hell no. Most men ain't got no good intentions for y'all. So we out here trying to get y'all right before some dusty ass man come along and whisper in your ear and draw you away from God. You cannot preach the gospel and preach the same time. Now I'm going to ask you like I ask all people. Show me where God said we can't do it. Okay, oh, see? Now, you know what happened? But you know why you believe that? Read verse 4 again. Listen, listen. And he answered and said unto thee, Take heed 
believe that no man deceive you. You've been deceived by man. The things y'all said to me, you've been deceived by the white man. Write basic instructions before leaving earth. It's nowhere in the damn Bible. That's right. Where's your God? Where's your God? Where's your God? Where's your God? It's nowhere in the Bible. What's your question, brother? Who are we in the Bible? Say it again. Who are we in the Bible? Okay. Give me that. Good question. Good question. 28. That's what I'm talking about. If you read it in the Bible, what God is your servant in the Bible? Now check this out, because this is a question I ask when people ask me that. Have you ever read the Bible at all? A little bit? Just a little bit? Okay. I read the whole thing. When you read it, do you see the names African American, Haitian, Jamaican in the Bible? Okay. But we do know that God created all people. White, black, Chinese, right? How come it is that when we read the Bible, we can never find the name that God gave up for that? The white man gave us, this is history, it ain't racist, it's just history. Because we didn't call ourselves American blacks. When we was on the west coast of Africa, we didn't call ourselves American blacks. We were here, right? So this is the name that they gave us in slavery, right? And we still have it post-slavery today. So when we read the Bible, we looking for the name that our oppressor gave us and we never find it. So let's see what God called us in the Bible, because you ask, who are we? Read that Genesis 32. Genesis chapter 32, verse 27. Hey, make sure y'all paying attention, because what I'm going over, before y'all leave, what I'm going over is the name that God calls black people in the Bible. Read that. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Now what is thy name? Because everybody got a name that God gave him when he created Adam from the dust. And then all nations came from him. He named every race of people. So he's asking Jacob, what is your name? You know why? Because the name means something. Black folk, and this is the problem we got with black folk, we got the hoodest ass names that don't mean nothing. And we run, we wonder why our kids is out of order. direction behind it, right? Read it again. But Israel, but Israel, for as a prince, has the power with God. God said that your name from now on is going to be called Israel, because your name means a prince with God. Now, now check this out, watch this. When God first made Adam from the earth, what color was the first man ever made? What do you think? What do you think? You don't have no Okay. What do you think? What color was the first man to ever be made? He was what? He was a black man, right? Now go to Genesis chapter 1. And let's read uh, chapter 26 and 27. Let's show you how that ties in with us being called the princes of God. Why would he give us that name instead of American blacks? Because our boots are black. There ain't nobody on earth that color right there. Our skin is brown. Dark brown, light brown. Right. We ain't no damn black. Right. That's the name of our precious gates. Read that. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make men in our image. Hold on. The first man that was ever made was what color? He just said it. He was what? He was black man. So when God said, let us make man in our image, who did he have in mind to make? Us. And what did he call us? The princes of God. That's right. He said, you my princes upon the earth. Now, here's the thing. What in the hell is a prince doing out here with the common folk acting like this? No. That's real talk. That's why we out here. Because we were searching for who we was in the Bible called black folk. We love God. We might not serve him the right way. We might be caught up in all kind of denominations. But one thing I know about black folk, we love God. And we always searching for him. We might not even read the Bible, but we say we love God, right? So, so all of us on this side right here, we was in search for what God called us when we read the Bible because we can never find ourselves, right? Read that again. 
And God said, let us make men in our image. Now, we did have some understanding because we weren't stupid. Black folk ain't stupid. We know the first man that was ever made was a black man. So if God said, let us make men in our image, and he was black, well, then what the hell does that make us? What would that make us? Go back to this 32 verse 28. What would it make us? Read that. 32, 28. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince has the power with God. I said, I'm going to make a man on the earth look like me, and he's going to be the prince of God upon earth. Now, the question is, how is the prince of God? And I say this all the time, and it's going to blow your mind. How are the princes of God, the first man that was ever created on earth? Science proves it. Because two white men, a white man and a white woman, can't make a black baby. But a black man and a black woman can make an albino looking baby. All people come from us, right? So we're the creators of life uh, on earth, right? How are the princes of God put into slavery under cavemen? Check this out. Whenever you watch, what is that? Are you smarter than a caveman? You don't see no black people, do you? Hell no, because they know we didn't come from out no cave. White men know this stuff, put it in our face as a joke in a commercial, and we laugh like, oh man, it's good. But they don't ever show us looking like cavemen. So we the princes of God, the first man created on earth. The question is, how are the princes of God, the first man on earth, was put into slavery under cavemen? You know, men that came out the caves, they was eating lice off of each other. That's what they were doing. They showed the pictures of them on the ground with a rock. <laughs> that was us. You don't never see that stuff with us. How did that happen is the next question. If we're the first people that was created on earth, we're the princes of God. We strong. Everybody wants to be like black folk, but don't nobody want to be black folk. How the hell do we get on the bottom like we are today? Out here right now, trying to have a good time, but you know what they did? They made sure they upped the police around here when you niggas came out. Why is that if we the princes of God? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 5. Here's the answer to the question that black people have always had. How come when we vote for a president, they turn their back on us when they get in office? Right, Joe Biden said, Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't what? You ain't black. Black women voted for uh, Joe Biden, and he got in there and gave Asian people an anti-hate bill within the first month. Right. They has been fighting for equal rights for how long? All they damn life! Right. And black folks still get racially profiled. Billions to Ukraine. He's right. Sent uh, billions of dollars to Ukraine, funding the war in Israel right now, and Negroes can't get a loan from the bank in America. Yes, and we built this. Why does that happen? Let's read that Deuteronomy 28, 45. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. This ain't, and, and, and I, I see y'all, this ain't hate I'm teaching. This is actual historical facts. Right. What, we, what America has done to us as a whole, as a people, they have dumbed us down through social media and entertainment where nobody wants to look at the reality of what the world that they live in. They try to escape it through social media, through drugs, through alcohol, through women. We try to uh, escape the reality of it instead of facing it head on. That's, you know why they do that? Because they ain't got no solutions about the problems that they see and they face. So they just turn from it and get drunk and high. And whenever black white we come around, I'm there. Because I ain't got no solution. I can't help them niggas down there. I ain't got no solutions for them. I can't save everybody. Let me do me. That's what black folk think. You know why? I used to think the same way. But I got the solutions now. I said to hell with all of this stuff right now. I'm going to go out into the belly of the beast where my people are asleep and I'm going to give them the gospel of Jesus the Christ and let them know who they are in the Bible that they might repent and turn from the evil that they do.
what we doing. We got verse 45. Now listen, pay attention because I'm showing why black people are on the bottom. Read. Read on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee. Now this now ain't no black person. And, and, I, was, and I know white folks don't even think. Slavery was not a blessing for black folks. We ain't gonna sit here and lie to ourselves and say, oh, we thank the white man for coming to get us from Africa because we had bones in our nose. That, nah, that wasn't the truth. It was Gold Coast kingdoms, right? Timbuktu, the Gold Coast in Ghana, days of that nature. Sierra Leone, we was kings and queens over there. That's right. So ain't no black person gonna say slavery was a blessing because slavery was what? All these curses shall come upon thee and pursue thee. Slavery is a curse. That's now right. you know how we still living up under that curse right now? Have black folk went back to the place they took us from as a nation of people? Have we went back there? Have all of us, have we went back to Ghana? Have we went back to Sierra Leone, Liberia? No, we still here in the place they brought us, right? So, so technically we are still under that same curse that God put us up on. Keep reading. And pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. You know, what's, you, you know how we know we destroyed as a people, blacks and Hispanics? You know how we destroyed? Are you Hispanic, mama? Okay. What does... What does... Well, well, let me deal with this. I'm going to deal with you first before I get to him. What does Hispanic mean? What does it mean? It don't mean... I don't even know that. Right? What does, what does Black American mean? Because we call ourselves, we say we African Americans. What does it mean? We what God said he was going to do, put us under a curse to we what? To overtake thee and pursue thee. Until thou be destroyed. Until we be destroyed to the point you don't even know what God called you. Lord, that's destroyed. We don't even know what God called We couldn't even tell you where God is talking about us in the Bible. That is destroyed. Now, what's the reason that God said I'm going to destroy you? Read that. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments. Be a good Baptist. To keep his commandments. Be a man. About God saying be a Baptist, a Jehovah Witness, a Pentecostal, or a Seven Day Adventist. You don't read that in the Bible nowhere, do you? God said He told us to keep His what? Commandments. And black folk, you know what black folk is? You know how black folk, how we are? We don't think it's stink until what? Until you smell it. That's right. Oh yeah, God. But I don't hear you. You want that keep? You, you say you gonna curse us if we don't keep the commandments? All right, show me. Now look at one of the curses that God put on us, and you tell me if this match with Black history. Let's read it. Uh, give me that verse uh, 32. Verse 32. Look, I'm gonna I'm give you the understanding of the whole Bible in five minutes with three verses. Read that. My sons and my daughters shall be given unto another people. How was black folks' kids given to another people? Was it willingly or was it in slavery? Okay, so that's black folks' history, right? That's black people's history. Keep reading. And then I shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. That means to cry. Your eyes are going to cry all day long. Now who, who seen 12 years of slave? You seen that with, uh, what's that dude's name that they called him, uh, Pratt? 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 They called him Pratt. He played the violin in 12 years of slave. What happened to the mama when they took her kids from her and gave them to the white man? What did she start doing? She started crying. Read that again. My eyes, my eyes shall look. You look and you saw it and fell with longing for them all the day long. All the day long. And watch this. Read. And there shall be no might in thine hand. There's no power in your hand to get them back. In the movie. In the movie. Did that black woman ever get her kids back when they was gone? What about in Roots when they took Kizzy? Kizzy and Kuta, they watched her roll off in the wagon. Did Kizzy ever come back home? No. No. Is that black history? That's black history right there. Now watch this. Uh, verse 41. Verse 41. Now shall we be sons and daughters. I 
talking about our kids, right? Let them go back. God's still talking about our kids, because he knows one thing about black women. And, I, and this is messed up. Black women love their kids than they do their own men. Am I right about that? Black women love their kids more than they do the man that gave them the kids. So God said, if you're going to break my commandments, I'm going to hit you where it hurt. He said he's going to do what? And I saw he did sons and daughters. We're going to have a whole bunch of kids. But black folk, we be popping out kids everywhere. We got kids everywhere. Ain't none of them got no damn daddies. But we got kids everywhere. Hispanics, kids everywhere. Ain't got no daddies because their daddy out here chasing some old ass. But God said, you're going to have a whole lot of kids and do what? But thou shalt not enjoy them. For they shall go into captivity. Now God gave our ancestors kids away in captivity. What's another word for captivity? Slavery. Is that black history? Because uh, oh, we read out the Bible that they told you was a religious book. We read in black history. Now here's the kicker. Pay attention to this. Watch this. Watch how they went into slavery. And y'all tell me if this Bible ain't talking about black folk. Verse 68. Look it up. 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now here's the question for you. When, when Moses, I don't know if y'all know, but when Moses went back to Pharaoh, he said, let my people go. What type of position was the Israelites in under Pharaoh? Were they free or were they slaves? What do you think? They were slaves. So that's why Moses went back and said, let my people go. Hell, you ain't got to tell nobody let them go if they can move freely, right? All right, so he said, you would go back into Egypt. So if I told, if you got a kid and say, hey, if you don't listen to me, your ass going back over there in that corner. Are they going to be like, oh, yeah, please put me back in the corner? They're going to be like, oh, Lord, here come the punishment, right? Okay, so now let's see what how God said, I will send you back into slavery again and punish you. Read it from the top. And the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. Into slavery, into bondage, uh, into punishment. Read. With ships. How? With ships. You tell me how black folk, I want them to see it. For black folk, you like to turn your eyes. You don't want to see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. But your niggas is out here cussing all day and night. Listen to music and call your women hoes. And your niggas ain't nothing. But you won't get on the prophets of God when we make the Bible real to you. God said that I'm going to send black folk into slavery. By what? Read from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. How did black folk get from the west coast of Africa to South America to North America to Central America? How did black folk get here? How did we get here? What's the history? Come on, somebody talk to me. Don't put a stupid on me now. You know all the Jay-Z damn lyrics that came out 20 years ago. You know what the hell I'm talking about right now. How did black folk get from Africa to America four, five hundred years ago? How was it? By ships. Read what God said in the Bible that was written before any of us got here. Because I didn't know this was in the Bible. Because when I go to the Christian church and they teach me about white Jesus that love everybody and he hate the he hate the sin and love the sinner, they never told me that in the in the beginning of the book it was talking about black people going into slavery. They make sure when you go to church on Sunday that your ass never read the Old Testament. Matter of fact, when they said when you go to the church, the law of God is what? It's done away with. They say you ain't got to keep the law no more because you're about to, you saved by what? Grace. You saved by faith. You ain't even got to read the Old Testament. But look what the Old Testament got in it. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. That's black history. And you know how we know it's black? You got a smartphone. Watch this. I'm gonna, watch this. We're going to put it to the test. Type in slavery on your smartphone and show me who popped up. Get out! Get out! What people? Pull out your phones and do it. Type in slavery on Google and I guarantee you under less than a second you're going to get 10 million pictures of black people. What you got? What you got, brother? Young brother, white people. Who popped up? What color people? And black people, right? Huh? Who popped up? Black folk, right? Read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. That's God talking about black folk. You gonna go into slavery on ships. And look, and he made, look, and God made 
sure that you weren't going to be able to say, oh, Chinese people went into slavery because he gave you Google. You can type it in on Google, slavery, and you don't see no Russians. You don't see no Chinese people. You don't see no Arab people. You see black folk. That's your ancestors. That God said he was sent into slavery. Now watch this. Watch how much more detail God get about who he's talking about. Keep reading. By the way, we're of our speaking to thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Now here's a question for you. Y'all look like y'all. How do you young bro? Young man. 18, how about you, sis? 18. Okay. Any of y'all uh, ever been to Africa? Any of y'all ever been to Israel? Read that again. By the way, we're of our speaking to thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. God said, when I take your ancestors into slavery, you'll never see your homeland again. That's in the Bible. You won't see it no more. Now keep reading. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Put it back. From bond Read it again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond men and bond women. Didn't that happen to black folk? I know y'all only 18. I know y'all just got here, what? Was it 2000? What? What was your born? 2006. I know y'all just got here. I know TikTok and Instagram is with your own Snapchat. But if you don't know where you come from, you're bound to keep repeating the same mistakes. That's why when you go to school, do they teach you about the black kings in Africa and Israel? Or do they teach you about the white presidents of America? What do they do when you go to school? White presidents of America, they do not want you young men and you young women to ever connect about where you came from. But they want you to stay in that stupefied mindset that you got, that you out here trying to get. What's the word y'all say? L -l what's it called? Lit. Ain't that what y'all be, that's what y'all be saying. Or oh, has it changed? Is it something different now that young folks say? Turn up! That's what y'all be saying. That's all they want y'all young kids to do is get lit and turned up and look for some hoes, make more baby mamas, because you know what's gonna happen when you make baby mamas and not take care of the kids? The kids go to prison! Oh, they ain't built. Hey, when the last time they built... No, 18, I'm talking about stuff y'all might not know. Okay, when the last time they built a new university? When they built new schools? Y'all heard about that in the news anywhere? You Guess what they build it for young black men? Prisons. They building more prisons. How you building more prisons for crimes that people ain't even committed yet? Get that in Isaiah. Give me that Isaiah 42, 22. Look what God said about the young man that will be here lost, not knowing that they are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. What, what's your race? You, you African American? Same with you. Same with you. In the Bible, God calls African Americans. What about y'all? African Americans? No. Well, y'all, what's your name? Okay, Hebrew Israelite. Hebrew Israelite ain't in the Bible. Israelite is. So Israelites. That's right. Okay. Now look, you gotta know what tribe you come from. God says that if you so-called African American, you come from the tribe of Judah. Now look what they would do to the young black man that would be from the tribe of Judah. Let's see if the Bible talked about what will be happening to young black kids in America in 2024. Isaiah chapter 22 verse 22. But this is a people proud and spoiled. This is a people. He's talking about a nation of people. But I know some of y'all might not have ever been in trouble. But what y'all got to do as young men and young women, you got to start thinking about somebody else other than yourself. Right. Don't give, young black men, y'all give a shit about nobody, man. Y'all out here, what's that dude named Wayne and Melly? That dude, what he do? What did he do? What did Wayne and Melly do? What he do? What he in jail for right now? He killed his best friends. That stuff wasn't even heard of when we was younger. Right. A man killed both his best friends and smiling in court? Y'all don't even care about nobody. Y'all been spoiled, me destroyed. Right. Right. Read it. Watch this. Read that. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. Now, where's the black people at? Hid in prison houses. Who fills up the prison houses? Is it Chinese people? Uh, what about Arabs? 
Uh, what about Russians? What people are in the prison houses, sister? What color people? Black people. Hey, hey, who else is with them? It ain't just black people. Who else? Who's the other demographic of people? Y'all 18. Y'all should know these things. Who? Hispanics! Oh, look, watch this. Move, move, move. Watch this. Look who else is a part of the 12 tribes of Israel. You got black folks, American blacks, West Indians. You got Haitians. And look, what's his name right here? What is that? Puerto Ricans, right? What What are they? They technically what? What'd you call them? Hispanics. Read that again. What would happen to the black and Hispanic people? Read it. And they are hid in prison houses. They are hid in prison houses. Now here's the thing. What you What What do you want to be? What do y'all want to be when y'all grow up? Even in Ecclesiastes, I think it's twenty or eleven. It might be eleven. Nine. It's nine in the last two verses. What are, What are your What you want to be? What goals you got for yourself?
This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Well, look at the main flesh that you youngsters do, the evil you do. Read that. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Now, here's the question. Is 18-year-olds out here thinking about marriage? No, they should be. No, you ain't thinking about that. So the evil that you're doing with your flesh is having unmarried sex. Ah, oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. And you killing, and you smoking, and you drunk out here. That's the evil you're doing with your flesh. But God said what? Marriage is honorable and all. God said that evil you do with your flesh, he said, I'm going to judge you for it. That's why, who got the highest cases of STDs? Is it old folks or young people? Wake up. Huh? It's young people. God judging your ass. And some of y'all are going to the clinic and you can't get rid of the stuff you got and you got to live with that herpes all your life. Yeah. Ain't no shot for that stuff. You get a shit. White man said, live it up, have promiscuous sex, have all of that, uh, what do they call that, uh, nonchalant sex? Casual sex. That's what they call it. That's what they out here having. Casual sex. God said, I'm going to judge your ass for it because you don't want to be married. Read it. Marriage is honorable and all. I keep reading. And the bed under vow. So what you do, young men, young women, what you do with your wife and your husband in the bed, God said, that's okay. Because when he made Adam, he made who? Who else was made? Adam and who? And Eve, right? That was a husband and a wife or a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Which one was it? Husband and wife! And he told them to be fruitful and what? That was a husband and wife who was meant to have sex. Not young men and young women. You not supposed to be out here doing that. That evil with your flesh. How the hell you out here having sex, potentially making babies and carrying babies, and your mama and your daddy pay your rent? They buy the clothes that's on your back. Your mama cook for you. Your mama wash your damn clothes. How the hell is that happening? That you out here having sex and potentially being a father and a mother, and your mama and daddy got to sign your permission slip. How the hell is that? God said what? Read it from the top again. Marriage is honorable and all. You shouldn't be dealing with a woman or a man until you are ready for marriage. I guarantee you, if black women thought like that, you would have less heartbreak in your life. But you try to live it up and please the flesh. Young black man, you trying to live it up and please the flesh. That's why you out here looking at all these naked women out here. And you end up being a baby daddy and you got to pay child support to a woman and a kid you don't like. Now watch this. Keep reading. But whoremongers, who? Whoremongers. So a boy that has uh, uh, sex outside of marriage, God calls him a what? Whoremonger. So if a man is a whoremonger, a woman that has unmarried sex will be a what? A what, brother? A whore. Yeah. All y'all out here having unmarried sex, God calls you a whore. And 
if you a man having unmarried sex, he calls you a whoremonger. They call it ho for today short, short for ho. Don't walk away now. Now everybody come, we'll walk away. Don't walk away. God said whoremongers, he gonna do what? But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. He gonna do what? God will judge. Everybody try to walk away when, they, when the word of God cut you deep. Now it's time to go. Now it's time to go when the word of God is actually talking about me. I can't listen to this no more. Let me get up out of here. Hey, I got a question for y'all. When you go to the doctor and you got something sick, you sick, do you leave the doctor office before he give you the medicine? Huh? Do you leave? Oh, hey, so, I'm sorry, sir. You got, uh, you've got stage three cancer. Uh, we need to put you on chemo. I'll be right back. And before the doctor come back, do you leave? What we out here doing to you is administering life and health to you. We try to save your souls alive because this is stuff that you ain't learning in church. You're too busy trying to live your best life while your nation is dying. And you young men and young women that are whoremongers having unmarried sex, you got a chance to stop that. Even older men and women can stop that. But you gotta listen to God. Read what God said here. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You are having unmarried sex. God said, I'm gonna judge you for it. That's why 75% of black kids are born in fatherless homes. Because the black race does not honor marriage like God told them to. We try to live it up and live our best life and live in fornication. God said, I'm, and look, and here's the thing about it. How come? How come when Caucasian people, they do the same things that black folk do? They smoke, they do cocaine, they have unmarried sex. How come they don't have the same worst statistics like we have as a people? You mean that in the book of Amos. Let's see why God is judging black folk for the same evil that white people and Chinese people and Arab people do. It's whores in the Arab race. It's whores in the Caucasian race. It's whoremongers there. Well, how come only black folk keep getting the short end of the stick? Let's read it. Amos 3 and 3, 3 and 1. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord was spoken against you, all children of Israel. Move out of the way. Move, move, move. For all those that are just coming up looking, that, that don't want to hear the words of God because you offended of what God said. I didn't say this stuff. I'm just reading to you what's in the Bible that your pastor won't tell you. God says the children of Israel, which is you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, you are the black. You are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Okay, Pan-Africanism. That's just another faction of black folk looking for themselves. So they say they're Pan-African. God says what about the black folk that say they're Pan-African or Asiatic, whatever it may be? Read that. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. God calls black folk and Hispanics and Native Indians in the Bible the children of Israel. Because everybody knows that black people, when God made black folk in the beginning, he didn't call them African Americans. Come on, that's, that's history. We don't read that stuff in the Bible. God calls us the children of Israel. Now look what he says he's going to do to the children of Israel, the sons and daughters of God, for disobeying him. Read that. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of of the earth. God says I only deal with one people on the earth. Now listen to what he said I'm going to do to that one people that I only deal with, sis. Read that. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. Black folks, white people do the same evil, right? Black, white women out here having unmarried sex. Uh, uh, Chinese women out here doing it. Chinese men out here doing it. But do they suffer the same consequences for the things that they do? Read it again what God said. Therefore, this is it. Don't turn around on this. This is it. Listen. I will punish you for all your iniquity. God said, I'm going to punish my people for the sin that they do. Because we are the sons and daughters of God. You wanna, and this is, how, this is how true this is right now. Uh, what is this? This is called Black Bike Week, right? 
Why is it called Black Bike Week? Let's be real. Why is it called Black Bike Week? Why can't it just be called Bike Week? Because white folk was here last week on they Harley Davises and don't want you Negroes around. And black folk want the same thing that white people want. So you know what? We gonna start our own Bike Week and call it Black Bike Week. God said, I'm gonna punish you for all your evil. And in the punishment that God does, all these police officers wasn't out here last week. Am I lying? You know I'm right. God said, I'm going to do what for you? Punish you for all your iniquity. God said, if you want to keep living like the other nations and sin, he going to punish you for it. That's what we are as a people, but we don't want to live in the reality of God. That's why we only got four, five people over here listening, a few Caucasian people. The Bible is written for blacks and Hispanics, and they don't give a damn what God got to say. God said, I'm going to do what to you? Punish you for all your iniquity. I said, I'm going to keep putting your ass on the bottom. You, you go keep being baby mamas and hoard out and in the clinics and in the prison houses and racially profiled and can't get bank loans. God said, I'm going to punish you for all of your sins. And all the white folk that's around here listening right now, no damn well, that's the truth. <laughs> they know damn well when Jamal Anderson's name come across their desk with the resume, they push it to the side. Hell, it don't even get that far no more. They got AI to make sure your black resumes don't get in their face no more. They ain't even got to look at it no more. The AI did. Jamal Anderson, push it to the damn side. Unless you're an exceptional Negro, you can't work for That's the Bible, because God said, what? Read it again. I will punish you for all your iniquities. And this is the thing right here. Black folk like to act like this ain't their history. This is the punishment of God. Right. Slavery is the punishment of God on his people because they refuse to do what God said to do. That's the punishment of God. And the thing is about it, you black folk, if you don't change, God going to leave you to die here in your sin. Somebody going to get killed this weekend. It always happens when the prophets of God come up and warn you. Give me that Ezekiel 3, verse 17. Come up. But I'm going to give you this before we leave. Ezekiel 3 and verse 17. Because you might think this is harsh. You ain't never heard it like this before. You damn right you ain't heard it like this before. Because we don't want your money. We don't want your membership in our church. We want you to repent and do thus saith the Lord. Read that Ezekiel 3 verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. House of Israel is the blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians on the earth. Because God never called us Hispanic or black or African American that was given to us in the 1600s doing chattel slavery. That's history, right? He doesn't call us that. God said, you, O house of Israel, read. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. That's all our job is to do is give you blacks and Hispanics warning from God. That's right. That's what we are here doing. You might hate the messenger. One day you'll eventually kill the messenger. But what will happen is, is that we have given you the warning from God. Keep reading. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest them not warning, thou nor speakest, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. To do what? To save his life. This is the thing. Y'all think that this is hatred. You think this is harsh. You think this is judgmental. But it's actually to do what? To save his life. You, this is actually to save your life. The words of God. And many of you are shocked because you didn't know this stuff was in the Bible. It's actually meant to save your life. So you can realize who you are according to God. That you are the Israelites from the tribe of Judah. The Israelites from the tribe of Benjamin. Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, Gad, Reuben, Issachar. We are here trying to save your life. And the best way that we know how to save the black man and black woman's life is through the words of God. Through the words of Jesus the Christ. 
Oh, look at this. Give me that in, uh, okay, give me that Matthew 15, uh, verse 24. Now, a lot of people got it misconstrued. Jesus Christ didn't come to save the whole world. He only come from one race of people. Let's read that. Matthew 15, 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's in the New Testament. Jesus the Christ said he only came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You, you brother, right here, what, what race are you? What's your race? White. What's your name? You white? Okay, what about you? Uh, African American. According to the Bible, God calls African Americans Judah. He calls Caucasians Edom in the Bible. Because look at this, this is how we go. Caucasian means what? We know some history. What Caucasian means? Y'all listen, come on, interact with me. Caucasian means cave dweller. Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Caucasian means cave dweller. You don't read anybody named Caucasian in the Bible. He calls them Edom in the Bible. That's what he calls Caucasians, and he calls black people Israel in the Bible. That's the biblical name. This is the opportunity for us to melanated people to come together because they do have a Harley week and then they want to call this Black Bike Week. I didn't know that, but no, I don't figure this is for us. The racism is still here. The racism is still here. It wouldn't be a Harley week and a Black Bike Week if it wasn't. See what I'm saying? Man, we at Murder Beach for the Black Beach Bike a Weekend, whatever it's called, man. The prophets are here to wake our people up, man. Tell our people, man, it's time to repent and come out this foolishness, man. You got this place swarming with our people. You would, you would think we're gathering together with something good, but it's not. It's filth out here. You even got brothers walking around with their wives half naked. What are we doing? We're out here showing our people there's a better way. There's a better example. This image messed us up. Right. And that's why we are here to show you what the real image is. We are something that the most I say. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation time.